Hey everyone, I'm Noren Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel and welcome to this honestly kind of super surprising, actually not really a rules balance to the Space Marines. Space Marines desperately, desperately needed this. I'm not going to lie, they, Space Marines were sitting at the top with being almost uncontested so they desperately needed a rules update to make them a little bit more balanced. Um, especially Iron Hands or whichever ones they were, the Iron Boys and just, wow. Okay. So let's dive into this Space Marine rules update for February, 2020 Space Marine logo, glowy eyes of doom. Anyway, um, uh, stuff about Space Marines being balanced. That's hilarious. Space Marines waiting for the bathroom line. Also, I've always wondered who the hell this person was. Like, this has always bugged me. I know they're like a tech thrall, but they also have... They, they have his Arcanum. So, is he like... Did he just get that jacked from him and that guy's just giggling as he runs away with his little hooligans? Anyway, let's get into this. Um, let's see. With the release of Codex Space Marines and the various Codex supplements, we accidentally broke the game. Oopsie daisy, our bad. Well, that makes sense. Several months ago, we have been playing, uh, paying close attention to how Space Marine armies have been played by the community and how long they were faring and how well they were faring in tournaments around the globe. In other words, they were watching the ITC because that's kind of what you do. Why am I red? I don't understand why my lighting is so bad in here this morning. So I'm just going to shut these off because clearly they are not helping. Anyway. Wow, that makes me even more red. Holy cow. Try to fix that real quick. Boop. Anyway. So, 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 so. We've gathered enough data by now to receive enough of your feedback to realize that we accidentally broke Space Marines. Oopsie daisy. They have been performing super well at tournaments and have been in the top 20 for most tournaments in 19 of those spots with the occasional sleeper army. Yeah. I really don't understand why I'm red right now. I apologize about this. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Wow, that's a lot of updates. Okay. So where to start? Where to start? Ooh, Psychic Awakening. All right, let's take a look at Spas Marines first. Okay, Combat Doctrines. Replace the current... Replace the combat doctrine ability with the following. Actually, let's just go ahead and zoom this all the way in like a zoomer. Uh, with the following. Note that devastated doctrine, tactical doctrine, and assault doctrine remain unchanged if your army is battleforged. And if every unit from your army has this ability, excluding servitors and unaligned units, which is funny because you can have unaligned monsters and still maintain your army's coherency, meaning you can't take an inquisit, you can take an assassin and lose your doctrines. We can also take a, um, what is it? Um, what's that? The, the Amble and still maintain your combat doctrines, which I always thought was funny. This unit gains the, uh, gains a bonus, see below, depending on which combat doctrine is active for your turn. During the first battle round, the devastated doctrine is active for your army. During the second battle round, the tactical doctrine is active for your army. Now this is a big change because it automatically switches you from Devastator to Tactical, which is actually a huge difference. Most of the time, I would stay in Devastator Doctrine, seeing absolutely no reason to go into Tactical or Assault Doctrine, except by spending command points in order to switch certain squads to those. And I would stay in Devastator Doctrine the entire game because it was busted. Okay. At the start of the third battle round, select either the Tactical or Assault Doctrine until the end of the... Uh, that battle round, this doctrine is selected as active for your army. During the fourth and subsequent battle rounds, the assault doctrine is active for your army. Unless specified otherwise, these bonuses are not cumulative with any other rules to improve the armor penetration characteristics of a weapon, i.e. Storm of Fire Warlord trait. So they're being very specific about how these things balance out now. So no more combinations and no more little dirty tricks which i like personally god it looked like a cornate demon what the hell anyway so it's interesting that the devastated doctrine is only active during the first turn and is very difficult to switch to 
Um, during the fourth and subsequent battle rounds, the assault doctrine is active for your army. Unless other unless specified otherwise, these bonuses are not cumulative. So it's interesting that it's very tough now to switch to Devastator Doctrine, which is going to hurt Centurions. It's going to hurt Devastator builds. It's going to hurt Stalker builds. And it, overall, this is actually going to balance out Space Marines a little bit more and maybe even make them more combat focused, which I would be interested to see and how that's going to work out. Um, da 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 da. I still want to see people use drop pods. I think drop pods are cool. I do wish that if GW wants to sell drop pods, just give them to Sisters of Battle. Give them to the Inquisition. Give them to Admech. We actually have stories in the 8th edition now of normal, well, normal. The Assassins use drop pods. The Sisters use drop pods. So just, just give them to those damn armies if you want to sell drop pods. Or if you just want to replace them, go ahead. Duty Eternal Stratagem. Change your stratagem to read. Use the stratagem when in depth to start each Dreadnought model from your army is chosen as the target for an attack until the end of that phase. When resolving an attack made against this model, you can reduce the damage suffered by one. Ooh, instead of splitting it in half. That is interesting. Okay. I like it. Delete this stratagem. <laughs> Just get that stratagem out of here. Just tear that card up. It is no longer there. It is just gone. You cannot switch your stratagems. So you're going to see a lot of people playing Ultramarines. They are going to switch from Iron Hands and just be like, Ultramarines were always my favorite army because of Devastator Dog. Because Ultramarines. And honor and duty and and for Gilliman and that booty of rain. So it's going to be interesting because Ultramarines do have the ability to swap their doctrines as just one of their inherent abilities. They also have the ability to back up from combat and still shoot at a minus one. So I think what this is going to do is going to take everybody from playing Iron Hands and switch them over to playing some some other things like we might see Ultramarines hitting competitive play, which I've had a feeling about for quite some time that Ultramarines might hit. But again, just spitballing ideas. Without the Devastated Doctrine, we're going to see like White Scars hit there. We're going to see Raven Guard hit there a little bit more. But without the Devastated Doctrine, they're really lacking in that firepower, which I personally like because it means that there's going to be more experimental builds. What's cool is this actually hit right before Adepticon. I will be... Ugh, I'm losing my voice. I do apologize. I will be at Adepticon and I'm going to try to watch the tournaments, talk to some tournament players, see what their strategies are in between games, and see what I can do with that. Um, I want to see what they think about all of these changes. And my corn side is really showing today. Or I'm giving in to the Red Rage. Don't make jokes about that. All right, let's see what other stuff changed. It doesn't look like anything else really changed here, but those are actually massive, massive changes. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen. So let's take a look at the Raven Guard supplements. We have designer commentary on these updates. We might want to take a look at this errata, which is from today. Um, sisters didn't get an errata. They did. They did. Okay. So, Raven Guard, Master's Ambush, change his, strat change his Warlord trait to read. At the start of the first battle round, break the entire army and only use this ability to put Centurions into your opponent's face and excluding Centurions. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> That is terrific. <laughs> okay, let me actually read this. Okay, okay, okay. All right, change this warlord trait to read. At the start of the first battle round, before the first turn begins, if your warlord is on the battlefield, you can select one other friendly Raven Guard infantry unit, excluding a centurion unit, which is great. On the battlefield, remove that unit and this warlord. 
uh, if it is also infantry, from the battlefield and then set it up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from the enemy deployment zone and more than nine inches from any enemy model. If both players have this ability, you roll off. Okay. Okay. Uh, first off, they, they did change it to uh, units first, which is kind of cool. So it, it does seem like you go back and forth with these abilities. But excluding Centurions, GW finally realized Centurions are busted. They are the dumbest looking models that GW has ever released. But my God, when they came out, they were busted. This edition, they're still busted. Sixth edition, they were busted. They have always been a top tier meta auto include into your list because of how busted they were so it is cool to see that they are getting nerfed now how would i break this is the the question that's on my mind and to be honest i think the next best thing is a centurion uh not a centurion but a hellblaster unit of 10 maybe or um yeah, there's, there's nothing with the amount of firepower aside from aggressors. So instead of Centurions, you're going to see aggressors being swapped out there. So GW needs to get, um, get stepping on that as well, include aggressors into there. Otherwise, we're just going to see Centurions just trade out for them. So let's see, is there anything else? No, that's it. Um, designer commentary. Do I really care about the designer commentary? I know I should care about this. But really, I don't write this second. Okay, the ritual of the damned. Um, yeah, we got a we got a lot here. So let me zoom out so you guys can read this. Has the combat doctrine change? Here's the stratagem change. And oh, we got another one for gray knights. Use the stratagem when a gray knight dreadnought model is chosen. Okay, it's the same thing, but gray knight dreadnought. Um, do 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 do. do. Let's see. No one cares about Thousand Suns. Um, no, no real updates there. So let's go ahead and change to this one. So let's go down the first side. Nope, just one thing. Change the stratagem to read. Use the stratagem at the start of the shooting phase. Select one Iron Hands infantry unit from your army until the end of that phase when a friendly Iron Hands character model, excluding a vehicle model, so no more dreadnoughts, uh, within three inches of that unit loses a wound as a result of an attack made by that model. That unit can attempt to intercept the attack roll. Roll a d6 bef uh, before any rolls of ignoring wounds which is actually really good because unlike drones where you get to make all the saves prior to just passing it off, you can't anymore. On 2+, plus, that model does not lose the wound and then that unit suffers one mortal wound for each of those wounds. Uh, you may only attempt, uh, only one attempt can be made to intercept each attack. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Wow, I am really corny right now. I don't know why. I apologize for all of this. I think it's because I need a blackout curtain on my other window in here. So yeah, no more giant blobs of infantry absorbing all the wounds for your entire army for iron hands, keeping them alive eternally, which is... Ugh. And now I think I need to bring up the mantra of the iron hands, which is iron within, iron without, iron shake it all about. Sorry, just needed to. And then we have the Psychic Awakening Devastation of Ball. I think this is one is just going to clarify it for Blood Angels. So let's see. Combat Doctrines. Yep, 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 yep. All the same. All the same. Uh, change the stratagem to read. Use the stratagem when a Blood Angel Dreadnought. Yep. And all the same. So this is this is actually going to shake up the meta quite a bit. And I'm really interested to see how this actually affects everybody as they move forward with their armies. And I just, I really want to see the list at Adepticon because the players are either going to stick to their guns and bring the same list and still try it and fail, or they're going to swap out the Centurions for devastate, for um, aggressors, and it's going to succeed. Or they're going to, they're probably going to do the mix. They're probably going to do Raven Guard, Iron Hands, and they're probably just going to mix the both and just aggressor spam. 
It's going to be aggressor spam. Sorry, I am still getting over a cold at the time of recording this, so I do apologize. But the list I would take, honestly, is I would I would take Raven Guard, Iron Hands, do the same exact bull crap as before, and probably just throw aggressors at my opponents. Or or I might actually take Ultramarines. Uh and Ultramarines and Raven Guard. Yeah, Ultramarines, Raven Guard. Take the Raven Guard to do, um, hmm, how would I do this? How would I do this? Let's see, I want to maximize my push turn one. So I would definitely do a max squad of aggressors, um, a smash captain for the Raven Guard, um, or even Keevan Shrike. Um, I don't think he's that good though. I'd rather a smash captain. He's he guarantees more damage. Let's see. Then I would probably do scouts. Yeah, because scouts are just statistically better than Phobos Marines. Hmm. Yeah, scouts. So I'd need another HQ for the Raven Guard. Might actually do a Phobos Librarian for the Raven Guard to make sure the entire army is up there or a Phobos captain, just to make sure I have another captain up front um, to assist the assist them. Or Phobos lieutenant. Phobos lieutenant might be good. Yeah, to assist the aggressor bubble. The aggressors wouldn't have the flamethrowers. They would have the guns, just all the guns. Um, the scouts would be there just to line across my opponent's deployment zone to force them back. And then I would take ultramarines with... Uh, all the heavy weapons, uh, typically how you would do a normal iron hands list, but just switch it out to, well, ultramarines because you can keep switching those tac those doctrines to what you need. Like you, if you need the devastated doctrine on your Leviathan dreadnought, you can switch it out for that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's how I would do it. Is that how I would do it? Ooh, this is this is actually a tough call. So I'd probably do a Leviathan Dreadnought, a Daredeo, a Tech Priest, maybe a Daredeo. Daredeo is a hit and miss. Maybe a couple of Eliminator squads because I really like Eliminator squads for picking out characters in my opponent's army, uh, especially if you can switch them to Devastator Doctrine. Um, it's a lot of heavy weapons though. I might actually switch out the Stalker Bolters for the typical bolters, the auto bolters, um, just so I could take advantage of the tactical doctrine. And when I launch those scouts into close combat, if they survive, is the question. Ooh. Ooh, I'm going to have to play around with this. I'm going to have to talk to other high-ranking tournament players and see what their thoughts on this are, and maybe even get into an actual discussion with them and see what we can get out of this. I really like this because it's actually making me think how to play my Space Marines instead of just going, heavy weapons. Okay, I'm good. I don't need to brain. Move forward. So I actually like this. I like that Space Marines are switching to a Assault Doctrine, which really benefits the Blood Angels. Like, I see the Blood Angels taking advantage of this. I see the Dark Angels taking advantage of this, and I see Ultramarines taking advantage of this. I don't know why, but I keep defaulting to Ultramarines, and I really want to try out my Ultramarine list. So, tell me what you guys think. I want to know everything you guys are thinking right now. Comment in the comment section down below. Tell me your thoughts on this. What lists would you bring? I want to see some army list ideas down below. This way, I can actually check what you guys are running to see if it affects how I would have run things. And really see where this update takes the game into the future, especially going into Adepticon. I'm super excited about that, if Adepticon holds true to this. So let's see what happens. If you guys are super awesome, check out all the links in the description down below. There you can follow me on all sorts of social media, including Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I post a lot on Twitter and Facebook. I always keep up to date on all of my videos on Facebook. I always post interesting things on Twitter. And on Instagram, I always post things that I am currently working on. 
as well as some selfies because I'm a diva. If you're super awesome, check out my Patreon. Patreon goes a long way to helping out the channel. And we are doing more with our Patreon in the immediate future, I promise. So, as always, I'm Noren Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.